Get boss out to the pack. It is pack here. A first apology if I sound a little sick, because I am. I, I, it's not COVID, but it's just like a cold or a flu. I don't even know. I just feel weak and sniffly. But uh, I still wanted to make some content for you guys. I'm going to be talking about rosters. So five players that I think needed to get a roster update and didn't. These are players that didn't get an upgrade or a downgrade in the first roster update. And I think that's criminal because these players, all the one I'm going to talk about, needed an update. Right. Before the video starts, please join the pack and subscribe. I'm literally the only YouTuber that does ra roster and rating updates. So, hey man, if you're interested in it at all, please join up. Now, before I get into anything, I kind of want to explain something. So, you guys watch my roster update videos. And I get a lot of comments saying that I don't know what I'm talking about and stuff like that. And I agree with you. The problem with roster update videos, in my opinion, is that I have to talk a lot. Right. There, I mean, there's 30 teams. And I talk about three players on every team, so 90 players in a 10 minute to 12 minute span. I don't really get to go into detail of these players and what I feel. And I feel like this, this is why I make these videos as well, to break down exactly what I'm thinking. So at number five, when I get to Jordan Nora and him getting no upgrade or downgrade, I can take my time here and explain why this is criminal, right? So Jordan Nora, in my opinion, deserves an upgrade. Right, I understand why 2K didn't give him an upgrade at all. Like, I understand. When you look at his stats, you wouldn't look at this and go, oh my gosh, this guy needs to be like bumped up, right? Uh, I mean, he's only averaging 10 points. He's only averaging four rebounds, 1.6 assists, and not really amazing defensive stats at all. And his efficiency is pretty bad from 37 from the field, 32 from three. Those are not outstanding numbers at all. But we also need to remember that Jordan Nora is very young and is just starting to get a role on a team. This is his first year he's been a big part of an offense ever, right? If you saw his numbers in the preseason, you'd be pretty impressed. He actually played very well. And the Bucks are realizing that this kid has talent and they want to implement him into the offense a lot more. They need him to because this team will get a lot better if he starts playing well. They're trying to make him the sixth man on this team. They're letting him shoot a lot. I mean, in just 22 minutes per game, he's putting up... 10 shots a game in just 22 minutes. I mean, that's that's a lot. Only Giannis is putting up that many shots per minute on the team, right? So they want Nora to be a more important role, and you see flashes here and there. They literally ISO Jordan Nora when he comes off the bench. They really want him to be good. You see the flashes, but it's early. It's really early in the season, and it's going to take him time to get consistent with his shot and creating these own baskets, but he's looking good so far. Even, even with the numbers and the performance alone right now, he should have at least gotten a plus one, at least. So I don't see a world where Jordan Nora doesn't get an upgrade next roster update, because that was ridiculous. At number four on this list, we have John Collins. Now, something you'll see a lot of my comments is that they say, Pack, stats aren't everything. I agree with you, and that's why I have John Collins here. If you look at his stats this year, they're basically the same as last year. 16 points, 9 rebounds, 2.5 assists, a block of steal. I mean, these aren't like superstar numbers. Actually, they're not even all-star numbers if we're just keeping it real, right? But he is considered the third best player on the team rather than the second best player on the team. And there's no way where I can agree with that. I think Luka Pelz is actually a very good NBA player. I think he's actually really impressive and has really like shown everybody that it wasn't just good on the Rockets because of Harden. He's shown everybody he's just a good center in general, right? The reason why I think John Collins should at least have the same rating of him, in fact, maybe even a higher rating than him, is how efficient this man is. He's found a role on this team. Trae Young is obviously the superstar on this team, right? Like there's no doubt about that. He's the best player, right? The number two fiddles John Collins. John Collins only gets 16 points per game, but he doesn't shoot much right his efficiency if you look at his uh, field percentage 60 percent from the field and 43 percent from three I, not only is he one of the most efficient players on the team he's one of the most efficient players in the nba and from three and from the field he knows when to shoot it he knows his role he doesn't have to force anything because he has a team that has a lot of talent and he doesn't need to play hero ball so that's why he doesn't get these 20 point per game games because he's just not throwing the ball up he doesn't need to right he has other people to set him up he can shoot the shots that he feels comfortable with and he's playing amazing i guarantee you if he played how eight all-star plays which he would force shots up i guarantee you he'd be like an 86 87 88 overall player with 23 points per game but because he feels like he doesn't need to because he's on a good team that doesn't mean he shouldn't be considered that good of a player that's how i feel about that he needs to be bumped up for sure now this next player that did not get updated at number three is absolutely criminal 
Buddy Heald is a 79 overall. As of today, during this season, when the Kings are playing this well, there's no way that's the case, right? There's just no way he didn't get touched. Um, I mean, this team has clearly been about De'Aaron Fox, but this this season, Harrison Barnes has been the best player as of today. Obviously, that might change throughout the year, but Harrison Barnes has been fantastic for this team. The Kings are actually winning way more games than anybody expected. But the player that no one's talking about is Buddy Heald. In just 28 minutes per game, which is not a lot, he's averaging 18 points, okay? He's averaging five rebounds, he's averaging two assists, and a steal, right? Not only that, he's shooting 42% from three, which is most of the shots that he shoots. In fact, he's shooting 11 threes a game, which is like some of the highest in the NBA. And he's a huge reason for this team's success, right? Harrison Barnes can't play the game he plays. De'Aaron Fox cannot play the game he plays if they don't have a reliable shooter like Buddy Heald to give it to right he has been fantastic this season like buddy Hill's always put up these numbers but not on this efficiency not on a team that's winning like this much buddy healed deserved to at least be the 80 overall club in fact i think buddy Hill's clearly the third best player on this team today tyrese halberton's good rashawn holmes is good but buddy Hill's the third best player he needs to go up i don't think i need to speak too much about this one and number two it's jalen brunson um, if you're not, you know, a casual, right, and you watch at least some Mavericks games, I don't really need to explain to you why he's on this list. He's only a 78 overall, and he's been the second best player this season for the Mavericks. In fact, the Mavericks, the, besides Luka Doncic, the rest of the team has been garbo. Garbo. Tim Hardaway Jr. is doing what he always does, and it's just okay. Porzingis has been awful, right? Moses Brown isn't even playing because they're not playing him, right? This team is struggling very hard because their talent is not there. In fact, the biggest... The biggest problem with the Mavericks is that every offseason, they're not making their team better. But Jalen Brunson does not fit in that category. Um, I can give you the stats, but it's not going to matter. In only 28 minutes per game, he's averaging 15 points, uh, 4 assists, 5 rebounds, and he plays good defense, right? He destroyed the Spurs last time we played him. He destroyed us, right? He's been amazing. He's been consistent. He's been a good defender. He's scoring a lot. He's actually a second option offensive. Like, he literally go, like, can create his own shot. I mean... He's been amazing. His, his field goal percentage, 48% and 38% from three. I mean, he's been good. He's been consistent. In my opinion, the third best player. Obviously, they're never going to put him above Porzingis, but he should be an 81 overall for sure. He's been that guy for the team so far. And if he can continue that, the Mavericks have a little bit of hope because they've needed that third option. And if Porzingis gets better throughout the year and Jalen Brunson continues this, they're looking a lot better. Okay, last player is, is is like a sin that they didn't update him. Jordan Poole, only a 76 overall, no touch. You know, I always agree with you guys. Stats aren't everything. In this case, it is everything. Jordan Poole is the second leading scorer on this team that has the best record in the NBA, and he didn't get upgraded at all. In fact, they consider him the seventh best player on the Warriors. I mean, I mean, what? What? He's averaging 18 points. Three assists, a 1.4 steal, so he's been a decent defender at least. At least he's getting steals, right? His efficiency, uh, 40, 46% from the field, 36% from three, which is not terrible. I mean, he's shooting as good as Curry. I mean, he's not shooting as much as Curry, but he's shooting as good as Curry. Like, what? I mean, he's a godsend for this team. This team last year, okay, a lot of people didn't expect this team to do, like, do good. I'm not one of those people. You can watch my videos before, and I said that they were contenders. My, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to brag. But I said the Warriors, even without Klay Thompson, are a good team this year. Uh, and then when Klay Thompson comes back, they're going to be even better, right? This team is a good team, right? Curry's going to have an MVP caliber season. We already know that. And Jordan Poole is a godsend for this team because they needed someone, because Andrew Wiggins isn't consistent enough, to get buckets. And Jordan Poole so far is that man. Do not be surprised when this player gets like an 83 overall throughout the year. Do not be surprised. Jordan Poole is that guy this year. Now, that's it for this video. Did I miss anybody? Leave it in the comments below. If you want me to make a player that needed a downgrade, leave it in the comments below. And if you like the channel, please give it a sub and I'll see you guys next time.